start this meeting. Start this meeting. So welcome everyone, um, PitNug members. Today we have Carl Wessner presenting expense commitments and budget validations. It's a, a tweet app and um, we will let Carl go ahead and start your presentation and I'm gonna mute out, okay? Perfect, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time reading through uh, this summary here. You'll see this if you navigate to the Sweet, uh, sweet Apps and bring this page up. Um, in summary, this process is going to allow you, as I briefly mentioned earlier, it's going to allow you to verify your committed and your consumed expense on both purchase orders, purchase requests, purchase requests being if the employee's entering it, and your vendor bills against the budget. So in short, you can, you can think about this process as helping you to avoid overspending uh, prior to finding out about it at month end when you go to compare actual to budget. So let's take a look at the next slide. Um, some key features I wanna point out. The Suite app is for expense only. Uh, a key to that, if you're, and we'll talk about this more, in the upcoming slides, but there's two ways that you can use this suite app. Against your standard uh, budget, which would be part of the native NetSuite functionality, or if you wanted to create a custom budget, you would only load your expenses from that custom budget. So this suite app is specific to expense only. The budgets are validated monthly, and this is a very important point that can be overlooked. Any remaining amount from the prior month, so let's say your prior month you were above budget. So now the next 11 months, if you're, you know, if you start in January, you're going to be squeezed a little bit. This is not going to carry over any of that into the, into the new month. So be cognizant of that. As mentioned earlier, it's going to distinguish between actual. So what's posted on your GL already. You're committed. So it's on a PO, uh, but it's not been approved. It hasn't been billed. So it hasn't yet hit the GL. You're consumed, which is a combination of your actual plus committed, and then it'll show you what is remaining, your budget minus your consumed. The custom segments, and this is something that NetSuite pointed out, and I'll clarify this a little bit, but custom segments are not supposed to work with standard budgets. So if you're creating a custom segment, uh, for example, at a project level, um, CSEG project, you should, in theory, use the custom or the custom budget uh, it, as part of this process. I will mention, though, I was skeptical. I tested that, and I had success. <laughs> so, when you read that in Netsuite in the in the help section or in, in the installation notes, take that with a grain of salt. Um, I, I beg to differ on that last comment, but I'm just pointing that out that that's something that Netsuite calls out. Um, I had success, though. A um, couple other key features. So when you install this and you have everything set up that we'll talk about, it's going to throw a warning on the purchase request, purchase order, and vendor bill, both at a header and a line level. So if the amount you put in in percentage terms, you can't do dollar terms, but in percentage terms, if you're exceeding your budget or approaching the budget by a certain percent, you will get a warning both at the header and the line level. And you could also enable it for if you do not, if a budget is not found. So for example, you didn't budget for a particular account and department at that level, it will tell you that there's no budget. This can be used at just a total by account level, or you can incorporate the uh, native and custom segments. If you do that, if you wanna incorporate those segments, then you'll have to update the save searches that work in the background that I'll point out in subsequent slides. Also, and this is a piece that isn't really called out very well in the installation instructions, you have to set up, if you're using the custom budget process, if you remember earlier I mentioned you want to load your expenses only, expenses or debits, so you need to create a, uh, a, a non-posting credit account to offset those loaded expense debits. And then upon install, it's going to create a custom transaction type in the background called custom budget. 
So for anybody familiar with going into your transaction table and you have different transaction types, you're gonna see a new type called custom budget and also new custom import area. Any questions so far? And feel free to interrupt me if anybody has questions. I can't see the, the chat tool. And Rhonda, I know you said you'll call it out if, if anybody has any questions in there. Yes, I'm keeping an eye on it. So. <laughs> Perfect. So once you install this, you're gonna see a new budget tab that appears in the admin center. Um, it's got three basic components, your budget overview, your setup section, in an area where you can enter the custom budgets. The majority of the rest of this presentation is gonna be focused on the setup. Um, I will talk about the budget overview in the next slide. Um, two things on the setup I wanna also call out. There's two subcomponents. There's a budget control template and your budget preferences. And then lastly, for this enter custom budgets area, which I won't talk about any further, this is just if you want to go ahead and key in your custom budget expense rather than do a CSV upload. So with regard to the budget overview that you just saw previously, this is really what it displays. And what I really want to illustrate with these two pictures, if you look down at the bottom where you have your categories, your budget, your actual on the left versus on the right, really what I'm trying to illustrate is that this is an interactive graph, which is really nice. If you're really just interested, for example, if you look at the right chart, you're really just interested in looking at your budget versus consume. You can deselect the other components to better draw out that picture. Um, the other thing to mention on this is that this is, um, you're able to lock this down for different departments on their dashboards so that each department only sees their uh, selected department. So the remainder, oh, excuse me, the remainder of this is really going to be uh, talking about the setup. There are a number of features that you have to enable for this to work properly. Um, the first is under the setup accounting, accounting preferences area. As mentioned earlier, you have to uh, create that custom budget credit account and note, it, note on that account that it is your budget account. Then navigate to the items sub tab and select that account that you just created. Also under the setup accounting accounting preferences under the order management sub tab, you wanna make sure that you enable the allow expenses on purchases. Under the subsidiary preferences setup, and, for, and especially for folks using multiple subsidiaries, if you only want this process to work for one subsidiary, you want to go into that one subsidiary and indicate such. And there's two settings that you would need to enable. The first one is really optional, um, and it's really better to find on the budget control template that we'll talk about. Um, but do you want to allow those transactions to be saved when a budget does not exist? I would encourage that you do enable this and then deal with that setting on the uh, budget control template. If not, uh, that could cause a lot of users pain um, every time they go to create a new PO and they're not able to save it if a budget exists. Obviously, those are discussions that would have to happen internally uh, with your finance departments. And then of course, enable the budget validation for the subsidiary you're interested in. So this is the budget control setup. And a couple of things really, you, you create it, give it a new name. Under the budget control action feature, you can either warn somebody, or as mentioned previously, you could prevent saving. As you could imagine, that could cause people a lot of pain. Um, perhaps you choose just to warn and then folks can deal with uh, talking with the uh, department budget owners rather than holding it up, holding up the process by preventing save. Um, indicate who your ma budget managers are that will allow those individuals based on their employee preferences to see certain information. 
Uh, over to the right is where you would enable your threshold. So, and I believe if I recall, this the percentage is the percent of budget remaining. So if your budget was $100, once you get to $75, that's where this threshold would kick in. Um, this safe search that's indicated there, there are two safe searches that will be installed as part of this setup. Um, these safe searches that I mentioned previously are where you're gonna to wanna to go in and edit if you add a custom segment. So you need to also add the custom segment to your safe searches so they appear as part of the results when the budget to actual and um, committed expense uh, kicks in. If you don't, it will throw an error. And then finally down below, you can see the various warnings, both of the line level and a header level, the piece in red is the header level that will be thrown depending on um, you know, the situation. You can edit those messages uh, to your liking. On the budget preferences setup, this is where, let me navigate back for a second. If you notice, I've called this budget control test. So you want to indicate here in your budget preferences that you're using the budget control test that you just created. That's where that piece comes in. Oops, excuse me. You want to enable budget validation. One thing I want to call out about that setting. In Sandbox, um, you're probably going to go through all the motions, get everything set up for testing purposes. If you decide to move this to production, you can't simply turn this off and expect that, that everything's gonna be fine until you enable the budget validation. The reason for that is because when you install this in production, there's gonna be a number of custom fields that are created in the background. So you really still have to deal with those in terms of permissions and, and things like that on, on the user's uh, role. So you have to account for that. Otherwise, users will still get error messages when you move it to production. Um, the budget validation source, this is where if you want to use custom budget, you indicate such. If you choose a standard budget, down here in the budget category is where you can choose what budget. Is it your latest budget? Is it really maybe a forecast, a one plus 11? Um, a comment on that, obviously, you know, previously I mentioned uh, this is not going to validate um, prior months once you move forward. So you may even want to consider using a standard budget. And then every month you can update this to reflect your most recent forecast. You can also use forecasts here. Um, over here to the right is where you would indicate what segments do you want to check for. And then again, the um, message if the budget is not even found. Lastly, the thing I want to call out is another safe search. This is also another custom search that will be installed. And again, for example, I added, in this case, uh, department was a standard segment, but we did have, uh, we were testing a custom segment. So in that case, I would also have to update this search as well to include that custom segment. This is part of the budget preferences. At the bottom of the page, you can actually just put in the budget name that you're using, and it will display for you at a summary level uh, what the total amounts are. Um, I didn't really find much more use uh, than that. Um, it's just a good reference. And then, of course, if you wanted to drill in, for example, if you wanted then to do some testing and find a specific example, for example, January, you can drill into this, get the details, and find a department for that for, and account, and then go in and create a dummy PO and make sure that your error message is getting thrown, like purposely exceed an amount that you find in that budget for that month. Okay, so this is really just an example of what you're going to see at the header level for a PO, very similar for a purchase request and a vendor bill. At the header level, as I mentioned earlier, that piece in red that we saw, it's going to throw right on the header that one or more transaction lines exceed budget. Check the transaction lines. So then if you navigate down, you will see in the case of an exceeding budget, you can see here the consumed amount, excuse me, the consumed amount. 
exceeds your budgeted amount, or in the case where no budget is found, it will throw a warning for you that there is no budget for that transaction line. And then finally, after doing some searching and testing, um, two or three rounds of doing testing, uh, it did become more and more intuitive working through this detail. Uh, but there are two really good videos that are out there to also work through, depending on whether you want to use the custom budget setup or standard budget setup. That's it. Okay, Any anyone have questions? Now's the time to speak up or, you know what, if you think of something later, that's fine. Email me. I can get a hold of Carl. Yeah. Um, we will definitely uh, have the presentation for people. Uh, I'll probably email that. And we, we did record it. So I'll post that on the Pitnug website. But uh, any questions? Okay, then. You did such a great job. No, no one has questions. But thanks, Car. I appreciate you taking time no and, problem. Uh, to do this for our group. And uh, everyone, have a good afternoon. We'll hopefully talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, Carl. Yes, <laughs> AJ. Shout out to Carl. All right. Absolutely. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.